in Matthew chapter 1 in Matthew chapter 1 it has this beautiful genealogy and this is those about how many verses are here about um, 17 verses that if you ever started to read the Bible these are probably you skipped because you're like he begot who and begot what and then you're like man I, I remember mom giving birth but like dad wasn't really a part of that I mean he was a part of that process but not actually like delivering process and so then you're reading you're like and, and Abraham uh, you know gave birth and you're like man this is the Bible must be right but I don't understand it and so let me just skip over until it starts talking about some stories if you read this very carefully you will realize it mentions a lot of men and then it mentions only four women in 17 verses. These four women, it's important to highlight. The first woman that is mentioned is Tamar. The second woman is Rahab. Third woman is Ruth. Fourth woman is Bathsheba. Now, this is not God sh saying all these men are righteous and all the women, they're just so messed up. Come on, we all know that none of these guys were good either. Okay, they were pretty much, they were bad boys of the Bible, okay. They were the bad boys of the Bible. All of them, from Abraham down to every one of these guys were bad boys. And it's not that there was no other good women, but I find it fascinating that God takes, honestly, the, the baddest women of the Old Testament. Scandalous women. Those kind of women that, honestly, we would want to keep them away from a spotlight in the church. We're like, please go serve somewhere when nobody knows you come to our church. These are those women, they were on the front page of their local newspapers. The scandals they were involved in is, is nasty. Tamar slept with her father-in-law. That's, that's bad. Rahab was a sex worker. That was her nine to five. Ruth was a part of Mobianites where, where they offered their children in fire toward their gods. She, she served, she lived in that part of the world. Her husband died and then she met Boaz. And Bathsheba, well we all know Bathsheba, couldn't afford shower curtains. David could not keep his eyes focused on whatever that he was supposed to be doing and next thing that happens is that oops I'm pregnant and then Bathsheba you know end up to be his wife and she, she was the the lover and so you look at these stories they're extremely these if you would write that's why I believe God wrote the Bible because if we would write the Bible we would hide them we would say these are things we don't want to talk about let's erase it where where is the eraser let's not mention these are not our most proud moments god takes these four women and he puts them in genealogy of christ what am i talking today about god's chasing you god pursuing you the felon the criminal the sexually immoral the person who crosses every boundary breaks every conviction that they subscribe to falls flat on their face morally. God not only finds them, God not only rescues them, God is not ashamed of them. God is not embarrassed to involve them, not scared to use them and not intimidated to put them in the genealogy of a holy Christ and not ashamed to start the first chapter of his new covenant to show off and say these are the people my son came through a few things I want you to remember number one every saint has a past every sinner has a future because of Jesus because of Jesus no matter how deep you've fallen no matter where you've fallen no matter how scandalous your story is no matter how 
the family the media and others has spun that out out of context or even if it's true the birth of Jesus Christ it starts from the beginning God saying the God taking scandalous perversion even sexual immorality moral failure God taking all of that and saying not only I can redeem that not only I can rescue you from that I can restore you use you and put you back on your feet that's number one number two Christ is better at saving you than you are at sinning you're not as good of a sinner as Christ is the Savior you're not that good he is better at saving than you are at sinning his grace is more powerful than sin his blood is more powerful than the stain of sin his holiness his love his grace his death is way more powerful he conquered death what is your sin he defied death no emperor could ever do that Alexander the Great couldn't do that no dictator no wise man Solomon couldn't do that nobody could conquer death death leveled every great general every great adventurer and leveled them all equal except Christ he conquered death therefore your sin is no match to him even the sin of murder even the sin of abortion even the sin that you've done everything to earn your penance and it still doesn't remove your memory and it still torments you and it still reminds you that you are no good that you are worthless I'm gonna tell you something there is someone who is better at saving you than you are at damning you Can somebody say amen